This video is about setting up your cupboard and your weekly shop so that you will find success with your um, teenagers and you will feel confident that you can go about your week and be giving them the right stuff. Hi, I'm Carrie Davis Munro, single mum of three teenagers, and I have over 20 years experience in the field of well-being, physical education, food and nutrition. Firstly, when you set up your shop, make sure that you are on your list splitting it at least 50-50, and half of your shop would be fruit and vegetables, vegetables more than fruit. The other half is literally everything else. And that 50%, which are fruit and vegetables, you will probably find you have got to go and restock at least once, sometimes twice that week. If it's heavy stuff, make sure it arrives by a delivery um, firm and therefore you haven't got to go out and buy all those heavy stuff because as I said, almost inevitably on this program, you will be going out midweek to go and top up, top up. So really then, your shop divides in the following ways and my shop divides in the following ways and I'm gonna give you, give you some hints and tips. So I then have a huge amount of tins that arrive by delivery. Um, and I probably have 15 or so tins of chickpeas. I have nine or, or so tins of various types of beans from cannellini to bolotti to kidney beans. Um, and then I have my lentils, at least five tins of tomatoes that I'm gonna use in sauces and pastas and absolutely everything that I make. Um, and then some, some passata. So this forms a huge part of my shop. It's very, very heavy and that's why I have it delivered. It enables you to go to the cupboard and have those things on hand and it enables you to make quick, fast, healthy food. Buy organic so that there's no additives in there, there's no sugar in there, check the labels um, and make sure the sodium levels, salt levels aren't high too, but that will form a big part of your weekly shop. The next thing that you need to make sure that you have are oils so that when you are cooking you've got the right stuff. In general you're going to try and use as minimal um, oils and fats as you possibly can, although fat, good fats do form a part of our uh, macronutrients um, nutrient diet. So therefore have a look and you might want to um, select something like olive oil but make it extra virgin and make it organic if you can. You might want to have um, a play around with some rapeseed, you might want to have some nut oils. Um, like sesame seed, which is wonderful for dressings. But they will form another part of your shop. And it may not be something that you're doing every week. So you might buy those one week and you might not need them for the next two weeks. But just check, because it's going to form part of your shop. If you're using salads and you're, you're cooking new foods, you're going to want to make sure that the dressings and sauces are really nice. So you might need some oils on hand. And, and obviously your oils are making your dressings. Next, you want to look at your herbs and your spices. You can buy fresh herbs. I buy fresh coriander, fresh basil, again, probably twice a week with fresh basil. Um, I use fresh parsley, I use fresh tarragon, I use um, fresh rosemary, but luckily I grow that one. Um, and they come as part of that 50%, but think of these slightly differently, because this is about flavoring the other fruits and vegetables that you've just bought. So while you can buy them and they're fresh, you can also buy herbs and spices which are dried. So you might want paprika, you might want um, nigella seeds, you might want your curry spices, your coriander, your fenugreek, um, your cumin. Um, so think about what herbs and spices you like in your families according to what foods and recipes you like and stock up your cupboard so that you can make your food as absolutely delicious as you possibly can. Spice is the same thing, you can grow your own chilli, your teenagers can, can grow your own chilli, but make sure that your flavouring is, is different and, and it makes mealtime really special. So you're not serving up bland food that they're going to think, oh, I mean, a healthy diet just isn't any fun. It's about inspiring them, it being delicious and nutritious. And seasoning. And then by seasoning I mean all the other things around that, so usually the condiments. So in terms of the condiments, I'm not telling you to um, immediately get rid of those things that you might be using as a crutch, but I am telling you to alternate and to use some substitutes. So you can make some great sauces and flavours just for, from some raw sea salt, some um, ground black pepper, some lemon juice, the right oils, um, some raw cider vinegar, using some tamari, and then don't forget, have the right sweeteners. So it is about throwing out the sugars that are doing harm and just clearing your house of anything that's detrimental to health in that way. So in terms of the sweeteners, I would advise um, 
organic jaggery or organic um, coconut uh, sugar or organic coconut nectar and then clear everything else out the house. But you will want a little bit of a sweetener. And as long as you're not loading the foods, these are the best sweeteners with some nutrient value to use. You don't want anything refined. Get rid of your white um, uh, icing sugar and your white sugars out the house. So as far as seasoning goes, it's about the sweeteners, it's about the oils, it's about the lemon juices, the tamaris, the Worcester sauce, the Tabasco. And then with these, you add them to lots of the things that you're cooking. It's about having chili on hand. It's about having garlic on hand, even garlic, um, garlic powder on hand, so that you're able to liberally put the most delicious flavors in the food that you're cooking. Then we move on to frozen food. Frozen food is about having things there when you run out, basically. Um, or in my earlier video, I looked at a really quick snack for teenagers um, in the form of edamame. And I buy about four packets of these a week and you're able to steam them in a matter of minutes and they have a hot steaming warm snack after they come back from school. Um, edamame is a soya product, a soya bean, um, and it's a way of getting the vegetables in them. And I will again sprinkle this with garlic salt and uh, enough seasoning so that they find it totally delicious. It's also about putting some spare fruits in your freezer and obviously vegetables. Um, people think that it's not so fresh. That's not true. Um, frozen food is absolutely fresh because it's packed at the point it's picked. So instead of it having to travel lots of air miles, it's often far better for you. It is literally picked, packed, frozen, sent to you. And it does retain all the goodness. The other thing is your pantry. And what I mean by your pantry is not just your tins, but everything from your pastas to your rices, to your flours and everything in between. So your couscous to your giant couscous. Um, in terms of flours, throw out the white flour. You want to replace that with things like rye flour, buckwheat flour, spelt flour. And that's what you want to use in your pancakes, in your sauces, in your breads, in your mixes, in your biscuits. Throw out the white stuff. Again, be guided by colour. If something has more colour, it is usually far, far better for you. Pastas, white pasta, throw it out empty calories, replace it with vegetable pastas, with wholemeal pastas, with uh, spelt pastas. You can even get seaweed pastas. Um, so explore what's out there. They're so much more flavorful. And again, these days you can make courgette. So you can have your pasta substitute from courgettes itself and vegetables. Make sure in terms of rice, throw out the white stuff again. Replace it with wild rice, um, red kamag rice, um, basmati rice short grain, long grain. The only thing you don't want is your, white, is your white rice. We get through tons of rice in this house. Make sure you wash it very well each time. Um, and you can make a batch of rice at the beginning of the week. Yes, it takes longer to cook brown rice and wild rice, red rice. So make a big batch, put it in your fridge and keep it and it will be there to the end of the week. So you can use it right the way through. It's about preparing and setting yourself up for success. Um, quinoa, another one, nutrient dense food. I find it really hard to, um, to palate. It's, it's quite a gooey food. I just don't like the mouthfeel. So I have to buy different colored grains of quinoa, which gives it far greater texture. And then I flavor the hell out of it. I put lots of lemon juice into it. I put olive oil in it. I put garlic in it. I put chili in it. Um, I might put a bit of tamari in it and then I will mix it with handfuls of spinach and coriander and basil then it's totally delicious and you can serve it with anything. So it's about flavoring everything up. Don't put an empty, uh, in terms of flavor, bland plate full of food um, or vegetables in front of your teenagers and expect them to go for it because they won't. This is not about denial, it's about reward, feeding them the most delicious and nutritious food that you possibly can. If this has been interesting for you, then please tell me so in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to see the food that you're cooking. Um, and please um, hit subscribe and follow me for my next video.